What's My Line? Brought to you by Geritol, the high-potency vitamin iron-rich tonic in liquid or tablets to help you feel stronger. And now, let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now, one of our favorite panelists who has just returned from Greece, where he completed a picture called Not On Your Life, our favorite Greek bearing a gift tonight is Tony Randall. Well done. It is my pleasure to introduce the charming columnist, Mother and Twister, one half, one half of Dorothy and Dick, Dorothy Kilgallen. And our wonderful Random House publisher, Betty Sir. Last Wednesday, I was up in New Hampshire at the Concord, mm -hmm. in Concord, at the Apple Tree Bookshop, an autographing party, when a darling little old lady came in and said, do you know, Mr. Surf, that you are right near the Tilton School, where John Daly went when he was a boy? And she said, I taught him when he was a little boy. And I said, what was he like? She said, he was a cherub, but he couldn't spell. She said, we asked him to spell weather one day, and he spelled it W-E-I-T-H-O-U-R. And we told him that's the worst spell of weather we've had in New Hampshire in 30 years. <laughs> and here is that cherub himself, John Charles <laughs> The horrible truth of the matter is that I'm not a good speller, and he scared the daylights out of me there for a minute. And then I realized he was merely setting the scene for a pun. But Tilton School did very well by me, because I'm a better speller than I should be, and Tilton School made it all possible. So thank you, Bennett. Spell of weather. Good Lord. Tony, it's nice to have you back with us again. And I think we've got a very interesting half hour. I will indicate to you that it has a special character by telling you that we would like you to put your blindfolds on. Oh. Things are going to be very special tonight. And we'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show. And we'll meet our first challenger. All right, it's time to meet our first challenger. If my friends in the panel are all securely blindfolded. Blindfolds in place, panel? Yes. yes. See? Good. Would you then enter and sign in, please? All right, uh, may I ask if you're familiar with our scorekeeping system? Yes. In that event, we'll let the audience at home and the audience here in the theater know exactly what your line is. <laughs> Panel, after all these happy years together, I think I need only say to you that uh, you recognize you're blindfolded for other obvious reasons, and I won't go into them. We do want to give you uh, the usual bit of prior information. We'll tell you that our guest is salaried and deals in a service. And let's begin the general questioning with uh, Arlene Francis. <coughs> Would we recognize you because your picture has been in the papers in the last month? Maybe. Um, do you wear anything other than what you are wearing on the panel tonight that would make you more recognizable? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Rand. Sir, when you perform your salaried service, uh, are you in public? But now, do you mean, um, I mean, do you perform publicly, like some sort of performer? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you in any way connected with sports? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Have you any connection whatever with the entertainment industry? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Is your service 
connected with a non-profit making organization? Yes. <laughs> Are you in some branch of government? Yes. Would it be the federal government? Yes. Are you usually stationed in Washington? Yes. How about that? <laughs> Uh, are you connected with, are you appointed to office rather than elected to office? Yes. Oh, I'm in such trouble. <laughs> Dorothy has something coming over her, like a hot flash. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> I can may see her all the way over here. May I inquire if it is the intention of the panel to ask for a uh, conference period? Uh, I think that should be Arlene's. Privilege. Or I'm prerogative, we might even say, when we're yes, talking to John. Prerogative, yes. You may have may I, John? Oh, sure. You may have 15 seconds for a I thought you might ask him if he was related to anyone in government. Uh, related to anyone in Washington? In government. That would narrow it down in to government? about a thousand. That makes him a kid. Well, Dorothy wants to know. <laughs> you don't ask it if you don't believe in it, Arlene. I believe in relations all the way. Uh, <laughs> maybe it's a relation of mine. Uh, are you relatively in government? No. <laughs> <laughs> five down and five to go, Mr. Randall. Sir, are you in the um, executive branch of government? Yes. Is your work um, connected more with domestic than foreign affairs? Yes. Um, hmm, that rules out State Department, doesn't it? Certainly does. Are you, um, are you generally speaking out of uniform? Yes. And are you in any branch? of law enforcement. Yes. Well, let me say here that we will take the question uh, to have the intent of inquiring as to there's any relationship to law enforcement in the overall responsibilities of our guest. We would have to answer that affirmatively, yes. Is there any investigation involved in what you do? Yes. Investigation of crime? Yes. Are you connected with the FBI? No. Six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you Lyndon Johnson? No. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. Have you got any connection with the Treasury Department? No. Eight down and two to go, Miss Francis. Now, wait just a minute. Investigation of crime. And not Treasury, not FBI. Treasury. And he's Treasury appointed. Secret Service, so that rules out Secret Service. Military. There's no call for a conference. It's no, not no, military no. or he'd be in uniform. Um, you want to give up? No. <laughs> no, that's treasure department. Uh, if the president were to go on an extended tour, is it likely that you might accompany him? No. Nine down and one to go, Mr. Randall. I'm, I'm lost, John. I'll have to pass. Miss Kilgallen? How could you be? Um... <laughs> Well, I can't think of anything but the Secret Service, and Tony says that's Treasury. Uh, is the I National see. Secret Service Treasury, too? Secret Service is the Treasury. Oh, okay, I passed to Bennett. What's G.I.? Bennett, sir. Uh, uh, have you got... Uh, does your work bring you into the Pentagon building? No. Ten down and no more to go, and it's my joy to introduce to you, panel, the Postmaster General of the United States, oh. <laughs> Mr. J. Edward Bailey. I must give you A for effort, but this is a, a department. Yes. Actually, it's the biggest department in government, isn't it? The uh, biggest civilian the department by far, yes, yes, we are. And I just want to say I'm crazy about your stamps. Well, that's uh, <laughs> <laughs> And you know, it encompasses everything that you could possibly have raised in question. Law enforcement, yes. crime, because the, the Postmaster yes. General has to enforce the, the uh, mail fraud statutes, etc. What so about what? this VIP business? 
Well, with zipping along, we're going to really speed up the mail with that starting next when, summer. When do the five-cent stamps become mandatory? January 7th. January 7th. Yes, everyone will have an opportunity to use those then on January 7th. Oh, that <laughs> Well, Mr. Postmaster General, I must say, I think that your responsibilities are huge at any given time in, in the year, but at Christmas time, I think if I had your job, I'd take a boat for somewhere in the far, far reaches of the Pacific and come back on January 1st. The mail job well, is Christmas time. Well, it is interesting, time. John, that we handle more mail at Christmas time in the United States Post Office than any other country in the world handles all the year. Good Lord. You mean when you say Christmas, this would be just the during the three or four weeks? Month of, December, month of December, we handle more mail in the United States postal system than any other postal system the world handles in the 12 months. In the 12 months. We handle more than half of all the mail in the world during the year. We only have 6% of the population, so it shows we have a lot of letter writers in this country. So it would seem. So it could and on be. the question that tripped the panel, I might say our uh, postal inspectors are the oldest law enforcement agency in the country. They go back before the... FBI and the Secret Service, and they're looking for the mail robbers in addition to the uh, schemes to defraud. Well, you, you have uh, very great responsibilities, and I think I do no disservice to the whole of the American public if I have the presumption to say that uh, thank you for the great work your department does at Christmas Good. time. You make Santa Claus yeah. come alive. Thank you. Well, now let's see what we can do with the second challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? <laughs> Joyce? Kate, right? <laughs> Is it Miss or Mr.? It's Miss. It's Miss Kate, and yes, where are you from? Wichita, Kansas. Wichita, Kansas. <laughs> Well, there must be more than <laughs> two people from Kansas here. I didn't even bring it with me. <laughs> you didn't bring no. it with you. Well, now, you've got friends you didn't even know about fine, here with us. Fine. Miss Case, may I present our panel? Mm -hmm. Now, would you join me over here, please? Do you know how we keep score on what's going on? Yes, I do. In that event, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, we can tell you that Miss Case is salaried and deals in a product. And let's begin the general questioning uh, with Tony Rent. Would you describe this product as useful? Yes, I would. Could it also sometimes be described as decorative? No, I don't think so. I don't think so, Tony. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Miss Case, could any one of us on the panel use your product? Yes, I think so. Could I hold it in my hand? <laughs> no. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Case, I know that Wichita is the headquarters for a lot of airplane companies. Uh, does your work in any way involve the aircraft industry? Yes, it does. Oh, uh, well, now let's see. The beach and Cessna, I believe, right there. Have you got anything to do with beach aircraft? Yes, I do. With what? Beach aircraft. Oh. You have? Yes. Well, now, what do I have to find out what you do there? Well, look, I mean, after all, Bennett, I could peel bananas, but that doesn't necessarily identify anything, you know? So, right. Miss Kate like has... I'd like you to demonstrate that sometime. Prove it, John. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Case, uh, does the work that you do require you ever to go up in these aircraft before they are delivered to customers? Occasionally, yes. Might you be one of the test pilots for beach aircraft? No, I am no, not. No, not a test pilot. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. But are you in any way responsible for piloting an airplane? Yes. Would you well, be considered a pilot? Well, now, when we say, pilot? if I may, hon, when yes. we say we're responsible for piloting, what we, I think, have already put into the record is that uh, Miss Case does have a, uh, an attachment to airplanes which would but incorporate a... flying the airplane, but we don't necessarily say that this is a description of her total... Um, interest in, in uh, occupation. No, but she does have a pilot's license. She can pilot a plane. Yes. Yes. Are you indeed a regular pilot of a regular aircraft carrier? No. no. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Randall. Am I correct in assuming that flying is not your primary function? 
Well... Uh, he's right. He's yes. right. But well, you it also is not do... the primary function. Yes, sir. You also do things with or to the planes when they're on the ground. That's correct, yes. When they're in the factory? Occasionally. You, you, you could say when they're in the factory, yes. Would you describe yourself in some sense as maintenance personnel? No. No. Five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you a designer? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. Chase, are you an executive of Beach Aircraft? <laughs> <laughs> well, no. <laughs> Seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. President. <laughs> That'd be nice. Are you ambitious? <laughs> <clears throat> Do you, in the pursuance of your job, always wear a uniform? No. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Randall. Are you a technician of some sort? No. Nine down and one to go, Miss Kilgallen. But is it part of your job to go aloft? Yes, sir. Yes. Unless yes, I let's say I this, that she would have some discretion in this, Dorothy, that she might consider that the basic purpose that she has is most usefully served if she goes aloft, but she could elect not to. Maybe she, uh, well, well, we have one second. I you may have 30 seconds for a conference. Maybe she is a girl who okays the delivery of the plane, that she is a, well, an inspector, who inspector inspects the plane before it's delivered and certifies that it's uh, ready for delivery. I'll buy that. Are you an inspector? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've been running all around it, and you're so, you've been so close for so long. Miss Case sells the airplane. And as for her piloting abilities, you were the AAA's woman's acrobatic champion, I believe, Yes, Rena. that's correct. Started, started flying when you were 16. Yes. And then got a full license when you were... were um, 17. 17 years mm -hmm. old. So that she knows everything to do with an airplane, and therefore would be one of the best salesmen of airplanes you could ever get your hands on. Mm -hmm. Do you sell many? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Beechcraft has them all over. Do you sell airplanes on commission? No, I do not. Not as from the factory. I see. Are there many salesmen? Saleswomen. And women. <laughs> Is there a large sales staff out selling planes on the street all the day? Oh, very definitely. We have 36 <laughs> distributors all over the United States. So there. Are you the only woman at Beach? No, I am not. Women in that are more job. I, I mean in that job. So no. It's a beautiful plant. I've been through it, and it's a beautiful plant. I just did a great book called This Is My Land, which, is, yes. which I think is a very handsome job. Evidently, oh, Miss Case wonderful. didn't send you, Bennett. I'm rather shocked. I, I, if I'd seen Miss Case, uh, I would have known <laughs> what she does. I'll tell you that. <laughs> All I'd like to say at this point is I think it would be nice if we could see Bennett beached. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very nice to have you with us, man. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. And now, the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which, once again tonight, my friends on the panel are all blindfolded. Are those blindfolds in place, panel? Mm -hmm. Right back on. Good. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? As you know, on different form of questioning now, one question at a time, in turn moving clockwise. And let's begin with um, Bennett, sir. Are you uh, a person who has made a considerable reputation for yourself at any time in the recording business? Well, sometimes I just hang around the house and do nothing, Jeff Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> but the answer is definitely yes. Arlie? <laughs> Would you be more likely, therefore, to appear in nightclubs than in the theater? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tony? <laughs> do sweepstakes tickets have anything to do with your life? I hope someday it might, but right now, no. 
That's what John and I should go, Dorothy. Uh, when you... Not John L. C. Silvoni. When you are in town in New York, have you played the Copacabana? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever uh, support Jackie Gleason in any of his television shows? I haven't supported him yet. <laughs> Is there more than one person over there? Yes. Tony? Well, what do you say, Tony? <laughs> Are you a man and a woman? <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> A man and a woman, yes, Dorothy. Are you Steve and Edie? Yes. <laughs> oh. That's one of the best invitations I ever heard. Oh, you sit around. I want to eat cheese. I'm going to eat cheese. You've got to do well, it. Well, sometimes that makes me nervous, you know. <laughs> I'm missing, of course, I'm missing the hat, which has a good deal to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Mm. Oh, that was... Baby. Oh, Babies they're, are fine. They're fine. They're both fine. Thank you. Just fine. Beautiful. And mother. Healthy and strong. Thank you. And mother and dad are, are fine, too. And the Copacabana is very lucky to have the two of you. I have a very special feeling, and I'm, I hope I'm not going to embarrass you two, for both Edie and Steve. You know, television's a young medium. And I guess two of the people who came into it, you were with Steve Allen. I yeah. guess that's when you got started on Steve Allen's program, wasn't that's it? That's right. Sure and we go back over the years, and you two are, are, are two of the fine talents that have endured. All of the testing and the vicissitudes of television have only made both of you better talents and nicer people. Thank you, Thank you very much. And, uh, I just think it's great to have you both here with us. It's our pleasure. Nice Thank you for having me. Thank you. Can you do that again? <laughs> <laughs> I got to... Say something to Tony. <laughs> you know something? I've, I've worked with him so often in, uh, in nightclubs, and I guess Frank some Fontaine. of it is. Frank Fontaine, of course, is uh, the gentleman we're discussing who's currently doing uh, an exceptional job on the Jackie Gleason show. I've worked with him so often that I guess some of it has to rub off. Do it once more. But they've had a lot to do with it. It's more fun than we've had in a barrel of Sundays. <laughs> Thank you. Sundays are what we deal in. Well, much... Good, long, happy fun to both of you. And, Have and your baby. Well, we've only got a half hour program. Ah. <laughs> oh, All I his hair is still red and he oh. just looks better every day. Oh, God bless We you. were talking this afternoon. We had a long discussion, father son kind of thing that you know about. <laughs> I do a lot of listening. I don't talk. Too well, it, it struck me he was making a lot more sense than I was this afternoon, so I finally <laughs> shut up. You know? <laughs> Thanks both for coming. Nice to see you. Wonderful day. Nice to see you. Thank 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 you. Well, I must say, panel, I think you certainly get A for effort, and you were loads of fun tonight, so congratulations, and we'll be back after this word from our alternate sponsor. Tony, again, it's grand to have you with us, and hope you'll be back real soon. And good night, Miss Arlene Francis. It's grand to have me with you, too, isn't it, John? Of course. Yeah. Always. That's right. Always. Good night, California, and everywhere, and I hope you're a big smash on Thursday night on the Hitchcock Show. I look forward to seeing you, Tony. Thank you, Arlene. You go back now to California to work with Doris Day? Yes, See I See how did. we get everything in? Yeah. <laughs> Good night, Doris. Good night, Tony, and happy Riddle Dee Dee, Oh, thank you for mentioning the name of the book, Dorothy. Riddle Dee And you cherubic fellow, if you're as nice as Tilton thinks you are, you're all right, John. Hi. Thank you, Bennett. See what becoming a father will do even to people like Bennett, and thank you for being with us on What's My Line. Television Network production in association with Mark Wilson and Bill Thompson. This is Johnny Olsen.